when low contact with a narcissistic person is your only option or your choice in a situation where you are still in contact with a narcissistic partner ex or parent or anyone really any narcissist that has been in your life any toxic person that is continuing to try and steal supply from you and you are needing to engage with them so let's talk about that my name is lise Colucci, and i am a life coach here to help you with everything related to toxic relationships and how to heal from them so let's get started talking about low contact so i'm just going to go through some tips today for how to do low contact in a way that will at least get you started so you can play with it to see what works for you what's working in the situation that you're in and what you need to adjust later on based on what you're trying okay so here's some things so they're going to call you they're going to text you they're going to email you whatever it is they're going to make the contact limit the amount of times you reply to them do not respond to the excessive texting so if they text you and then again and then again and again and again and again i know of people who will write to me and say least this is 50 today okay answer only what's needed in there in one reply so just give them a while let them go ahead and text away and then answer in one reply short and succinct and that brings us to our second point which is limit the places that they're able to reach you the best thing really is if you're co-parenting parallel parenting really with a toxic person use a parenting app that way it is court trackable and it is a place away from all your personal life away from your personal email away from your personal texting away from your phone so that you only go there to check that one thing and you can contain the toxic person within that app if that makes sense if you continue to let them text you and if you continue to allow the phone calls to come in or other ways of reaching you the emails even it's setting up a thing where so you know how like if someone texts you you have this urge to respond you have the urge to read it you know how that's just like this almost an anxiety for some of us like if we get a text we need to respond to it right away check it or it sits in our head like oh i've got this text sitting there there's something about text that requires from people immediate response back it doesn't really require it but you know what i mean it sets up this feeling of requirement if you've got a toxic person doing that to you they're using that they're using the fact that most people respond to texts pretty rapidly and if they know you they know you're not going to leave your friends hanging and so when you don't respond right away then they can come after you with why didn't you respond right away okay so eliminate that one eliminate the phone calls because do you really want to give them free reign to say anything they want without any accountability no minimally using words written is a forced accountability because if you show it to someone else they're going to see it okay whether or not they do anything with it or care is another story but at least it gives you um, some proof of the way they're acting all right so when you respond or when you speak to them keep it to the point do not elaborate do not go into things cut the fancy words out cut the niceties out keep it polite succinct and to the point don't aggravate don't push, don't ask for explanations to the point, And that is it. Keep your topics need to know only. So if you need to write the toxic person, say you are parallel parenting with a narcissist, keep the topics of need to know information regarding your children only. You don't need to send them pictures of cute things. You don't need to talk to them as if you're friend. You don't need to give them information about what the child's doing and what they like to eat and all of that. Let them figure that out in their own household. Don't micromanage the narcissist through this means either because what will happen is you'll get a back and forth dialogue that inevitably will turn into gaslighting and projecting against you. So keep it need to know, keep it basic. When they write you and they're asking all kinds of things unrelated to or a, coming after you, criticizing you, um, projecting, calling you names, saying that you're, you're not doing something in the child's interest, saying that you're not paying attention to the child, whatever they're saying, ignore all that and simply read through for the need to know information only. If, if in all of that nonsense, they say something like, what time is the appointment? All you answer is the appointments at five o'clock or whatever. Okay. And that's it. You don't respond to it. 
You don't respond to the other stuff. Um, stop engaging in any debate. That's what I'm talking about. Stop engaging in debate, self-defending yourself in situations in arguing, trying to prove your point, trying to prove them wrong, trying to get this, them to see the truth, trying to get them to see what you're doing, making excuses, all of it. Just stop engaging in that. It is not gray rock. It's absence of, okay, we just don't engage in that any longer. You're no longer in a relationship where you need to put up with any of this from them. That's it. You just simply don't answer it. I know it's going to feel really uncomfortable and it's going to feel like they're winning or you're letting them get away with something. But here's the thing. Anything you give them is supply and it will increase because they only have a smidge control of you over you anymore, right? They do not have the massive control they used to have if you're low contact. So they're gonna keep pushing and pushing their way in. And the more you engage, the more they push in and the more they take supply from you and the more they aggravate you, the more they will come after you. You're not going to calm the waters, be their friend, co-parent, it just isn't possible. And then we're gonna talk also about a little bit more about if, if it's a narcissistic parent that you're low contact with in, after a couple more points. But all of this applies. It's just, I'm kind of focusing on the parallel parenting side for a second, and then I'll switch over to talking about uh, when it's a parent or a family member. Okay, so so let your emotions from all of that out elsewhere. Talk to someone, talk it through with a counselor or a coach, okay, or a therapist, whatever. Talk it through with someone you trust, but I mean, I wouldn't talk to it, my friends about this over and over and over again, because they're, they're not going to understand, get it, be able to support you in the way that you need. So find a support group that does understand. Talk If you don't want to talk about it, can't talk about it, or can't find anyone to talk about it with, journal it, write it down for yourself, get these emotions that you're feeling out on paper. Okay, it's important for you to let them out for you to process what's happening. And to see that this is that other person's problem, not yours. Okay, this is the narcissist being a narcissist and you just are still on the receiving end because you still have to have that kind focus on your home, your life, your time with your children, your time with your family, whatever, and let them be at their place. Try not to control them through it's going to be frustrating okay narcissists dude they're just not great parents either okay sometimes they can appear to be most often what i hear is they're not and it's frustrating okay and you can't control it all you can do is control what's going on in your own home or manage what's going on in your own home right and to keep them out if you are putting yourself over there too much and this is not to say if something really, really bad is going on, don't intervene. This is the small things. What time the child goes to bed. I'm sorry, you can't control that. You can tell the child, you know what, nine's a really healthy time for you to go to bed or whatever. The child's gonna do whatever the other parent allows. That's kind of how it works with, with all co-parenting is people make their own rules in their home, but it's super frustrating with a toxic person on the other end because you know they're doing it just to undermine what you're doing. And that is why we step out, because the more you push, the more you engage with it, the more they're going to do. They're going to see that it works and they're going to keep pushing that button. So disengage from that. Focus on your own home with your children. Focus on being as free from all of that that you can so your child has you present, not you focused on the narcissist present. Does that make sense? It's really difficult, but this is a kind of important piece. So this can all hold true as well. And then what I'm going to talk about next also goes for when you are, this also works for with an ex um, or that you're parallel parenting with or otherwise needing contact, but more specifically when you have a narcissistic parent and that parent wants to call all the time or they want to talk about him, you're not going to go on a parenting app with a toxic parent, most likely. So they're going to text you. They're going to call. They're going to want to see you. Okay, and you need to learn what your boundaries are in there. You need to figure out for yourself what works. Okay, so if they're excessively texting you and you have decided I will answer my text to my toxic mother once every other day, then you stick to that and you let her text and you let them pile up. You can turn the red receipt off. You can, you know, open them so that the alert turns off or whatever. Turn the alerts off. Go on, um, what do they do? That little silent thing, okay? whatever you need to do to make it so you like if you say Tuesdays and Thursdays are the only days unless there is an emergency I am answering these and so then on Tuesdays and Thursdays you answer it once 
you don't go through and answer every single time she, that she texts, okay, or he texts if it's a father, okay. When you have in-person contact with them, when you have to be around them, do so with other people around. Do not engage in one-on-one -on -one if at all possible. One-on-one -on -one is has you captive and you are the audience to them. You are their sole source of supply in that moment. It is way better to keep them on their best behavior to have other people around, especially in public or especially somewhere that they would be embarrassed to act up, okay? And keep it in public if you can. Keep the location somewhere neutral, if at all possible. If they're hosting a holiday party at their house and you choose to go, I guess there's nothing you can do. There's other coping skills and we can talk about that another time, okay? But if at all possible, if they say, would you like to come over for dinner, honey? You'd say, no, I'd prefer to go hmm, name a restaurant, okay? And that way you're keeping it on neutral ground. When you're talking to a toxic person and you are engaging with them like you might a, a toxic parent, it's not obviously gonna be need to know and yes and no answers like it is with parallel parenting. So keep the boundaries with the topics. In other words, no sensitive topics, no heated conversations, no debates, nothing they can argue and nothing they can come after you or your point of view about. If you find it happening, have a list of topics that you're going to divert it to. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we should talk about that, Sime. Oh my gosh, did you hear about blah, 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 whatever. Change the topic. If they will not change the topic, you may end the conversation. You can say, you know what? I really don't have time for this conversation right now. We'll talk later. Bye. And hang up the phone, you know, or whatever it is, unless they have you cornered in person. And that's why you want other people around. So you can be like, hey guys, and then, you know, get distracted and talk about something else. Keep the topics away from sensitive topics. That is a fertile ground for a narcissist to come after supply. Know your boundaries. When you feel like something is just too much, when you feel like you, you like, oh, I gave too much today, I did too much, I engaged too much, I shouldn't have let that happen. When you hear yourself saying these things, just know that's a place you need to set a boundary. This is not like you're going to do this perfect the first time. This is a method for getting to where it's the least uncomfortable for you. And it's going to take time to put all this in place. So figure out where your boundaries need to be and start sticking to them. Set a time limit when you're talking to them. If you say i will talk every other week for 15 minutes on the phone on saturday at between two and four okay somewhere in there they can call and then you tell them hey i'm available saturday at two you want to call you know you don't let them set the t set the time and the terms you set it when that 15 minutes is over probably at about 12 minutes you're going to say hey i just let you know i've got to go in a few minutes and that way, when you hit 15 minutes and you cross over into 17 and you're still trying to get off the phone, you can say, you know what, I told you I needed to go. I'm sorry, but I really do. Talk to you later. Talk to you in a couple of weeks. Hope you have a great couple of weeks. Goodbye. Click. And you're done. Okay. It, and it's not going to feel comfortable because most of the time you're going to be cutting them off. Most of the time they're going to be like, well, why don't you give me more time? You, I notice you only give me 15 minutes. Yes, that's right. Yes, you have a right to your time. You have a right to the boundaries with your time with anyone and especially with toxic people. That goes for in-person too. When you're going to, say you're going to a family get together and you've decided I can stay two hours, that is my max. Stick to it. Just leave at two hours. Even if dinner isn't served yet, you, have, you are allowed to leave. Okay, you're allowed to leave at any time. Just set it up ahead of time. Just let people know so it doesn't feel uncomfortable. Hey, I can only stay till six. Okay. And then it's six. Oh, it's six o'clock. I'd love to stay longer, but I can't. Bye. And you know, you just stick with your boundaries and end conversation. If the narcissistic person gets hostile or unreasonable, if they are unreasonable and hostile with you, forget it. Don't engage. Gray rock that and the conversation. Cut that off. Okay. So those are some tips on being low contact with a narcissistic person. What do you got for me? What's working for you? What is not working for you? If you are low contact with a narcissist in your life, let me know in the comments, okay? And don't forget to hit thumbs up and subscribe. And I will be back next time. If you guys need anything regarding coaching, group coaching, peer support, or anything like that, check out the description of every video. There's a lot of information there with links to get you help if you need it. See you guys later. Bye-bye.